Good Monday morning, Tabernacle family. Today is Monday, April 13th, and we're continuing our walk together through the Psalms, and we come today to Psalm 61 through Psalm 65. As we come to Psalm 61 in verse 2, the Bible says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Here the psalmist is overwhelmed, and he's away from home. He's away from uh, where he wants to be and uh, the opportunity to go into the house of the Lord. And so he's saying, Lord, when I'm overwhelmed, when my soul is overwhelmed with troubles and trials and difficulties, and I feel like I'm, I'm sinking down, then Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that rock is a place of security. It's a, it's a place of deliverance. He says, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Like a, a defenseless baby chick, I'll rest underneath the wings, your protective wings, which will deliver me from the storm. And then he says in verse five, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. I thank God for my heritage. I thank God for Christian parents and grandparents. I thank the Lord that I had the opportunity to be raised in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church, and marry a Christian girl, and we have a Christian home. We thank God for the heritage that God has given us and the blessings that we enjoy because of that heritage. Verse eight, so will I sing praise unto thy name. <clears throat> Excuse me, so will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. We have daily responsibilities and we need to worship the Lord and honor him. And we need to praise the name of our God. Then we come to Psalm 62 and we find that David is in trouble. He is, he's dealing with the enemy. And he says in verse five, my soul Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. What are you hoping in, in this world? Uh, the world will disappoint you. Uh, troubles and trials will come. Uh, people who uh, oftentimes we think we can depend upon uh, will prove unworthy of that dependence. The only one that we can truly depend upon is the Lord. Uh, verse eight, trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Uh, listen, we need to pour out our heart to the Lord. Be careful who you pour it out to, by the way. Uh, I would encourage you to pour it out to the Lord. Um, and so may God help us. Uh, psalm 63 is a very similar psalm as Psalm 62. David, again, <clears throat> is dealing with the foe. And uh, the, the introduction of this psalm says, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. And we see in verse one, he says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Here we see David pursuing. What is he pursuing? He's pursuing the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm thirsty for you. I'm longing for you. Verse two, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Lord, I, I want uh, to see you at work. I wanna commune with you. I, I wanna be in your presence. He's pursuing God. And then in verses three through seven, he's praising God. He said, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. We can rejoice in tribulation. We can rejoice in difficulty because God is faithful and he's always taken care of us. And so we see David pursuing and praising and then we see him prevailing. You know, the praise, as we praise the Lord, as we learn to rejoice in him, that, that drives out the despair and that drives out the sorrow. And now David recognizes the victory that he has in the Lord in verses eight through 11. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fail by the sword. They shall uh, be a portion 
for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them uh, that speak lies shall be stopped. Look, David said, I know I'm going to come out of this okay. I know God's going to deliver me. He's promised to do so. And so here he is dealing with difficulty. What's he doing? He's pursuing the Lord. He's praising the Lord and he's prevailing in the Lord. Then we come to Psalm 64. And uh, again, here he is dealing with trouble and difficulty. He says in verse one, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Here they are, they're coming against me, Lord, and I'm asking you to hear my voice. Lord, I, I, want, I have a need here. Would you hear my voice? Would you hide me? Would you hide me uh, from the secret counsel of the enemy? And so he, in these verses, he's dealing with uh, the difficulty that he faces. And then in verse seven, notice those first two words in verse seven, but God, <laughs> listen, everything changes when we consider that God is in control, that God is present. And though we have trouble, though we have difficulties, but God, we're going through this time in our country. But let me say this to you, God is in control. So introduce him into all the troubles and trials of your life. Introduce him into the difficulties. Uh, learn that he is at work in your life and that he desires to draw you close to him. Verse 10 of Psalm 64, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all the upright in heart shall glorify. Then we come to uh, Psalm 65, blessed, verse four, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. What a blessing it is to know the Lord. What a blessing it is to have the promise that we're gonna be with him forever. What a blessing it is here on this earth to walk uh, with the Lord and fellowship with God's people and to learn his truths. Notice in verse five, he says, by terrible things, that means by great and mighty things, by, by terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us. O God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth. God is our confidence. And, and God is a powerful God. He's a working God and he is the confidence of the earth. Notice verse six, which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power which stilleth the noise of the seas and the noise of their waves and the tumult of the people. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid at thy tokens. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening to rejoice. Hey, God is in control. He created the earth and he controls the earth. He, the earth consists, as, as John said in John chapter one, uh, by him. And so God is our confidence. Notice verse 11, thou crownest the year with thy goodness and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pasture of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Hey, the psalmist learned when he looked upon the earth and the creation, not to take anything for granted and to see the handiwork of God in it all. And so may we, may we rest in the Lord. May we rejoice in the fact that he has chosen us and caused us the, to, to approach unto him. He's made that way for us that we may dwell in his courts. Well, I hope you're enjoying this reading through the Psalms each day. Let's keep it up. Tomorrow, Psalm 66 through 70. Uh, I love you. I'm praying for you. And may the Lord help us. God bless you.